In this video, we'll do an example of a superposition of states to show how we actually do one of these problems in practice. So let's assume we have the particle in a box wave functions. We have a box where the potential energy is zero on the inside, infinity on the outside. So the particle is constrained to only have non-zero values of the wave function inside the box. And our functions as a function of a quantum number n, which starts at 1 and goes up to infinity as an integer, psi n of x equals square root of 2 over l, the length of the box, times sine n pi x over l. So the first eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian h psi equals e psi, psi 1 of x is a half sine wave starting at 0, finishing at l. The second eigenfunction is a full sine wave starting at 0, finishing at l. And then I skip up to the fifth eigenfunction, psi 5 of x, which is 2 and a half sine waves, 5 half sine waves going from 0 to l. The energy of each of these individual states is h squared n squared over 8 ml squared, h being Planck's constant, m being the mass of the particle. And we're going to represent our wave function as a linear combination of these three states. So uh, the coefficients for psi 3 and psi 4 are going to be 0. Coefficients for psi 6 up to psi infinity are going to be 0. But we can still say that it is a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cn times psi n, represented by this ket vector in Dirac notation, n is psi n of x. OK, so we have the expectation value, or the average value of an energy, is going to be the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cn star times cn times the energy of that eigenfunction. And our normalization condition is that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cn star cn is going to equal 1, giving us a probability of 1 that we will measure one of these uh, given eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian operator. Okay, so my wave function, I'm going to have C1 equal to the square root of 1 over 2, C2 equals the square root of 1 over 5, and C5 equals the square root of 3 over 10. Notice if you square each of these and sum them, this does equal 1, so I have given you a normalized wave function here. So my superposition, or my wave function, is 1 over, square root 1 over 2, psi 1, plus square root 1 over 5, psi 2, plus square root 3 over 10, psi 5. So what is my average energy here? That's going to be cn, time, CN star times cn for each of them. All of these are real numbers, so cn star equals cn, so this is just cn squared for each of, uh, for each of the prefactors in these constants. So it's going to be cn squared times the energy of that eigenfunction. So I have square root 1 over 2 squared times e1 plus square root 1 over 5 squared e2 plus square root 3 over 10 squared e5. This gives us if I factor out h squared over 8ml squared, a constant factored out in front of everything, h squared over 8ml squared, 1 half times 1 squared, n squared, 1 fifth times 2 squared for the n squared, plus 3 tenths times n squared is going to be 5 squared. When I finally sum all these up, I get h squared over 8ml squared, 1 half plus 4 fifths plus 15 halves. So that fraction sums up to give me my final result. The average value of energy that I'm going to measure is h squared over 8ml squared times 44 fifths. I factored it this way just because the energy of our individual eigenfunctions is always some multiple times h squared over 8ml squared. It's 1 for n equals 1, 4 for n equals 2, 25 for n equals 5, etc. All right, so that's our average energy. What's the probability of measuring each of these individual energies, of measuring E1, E2, or E5? Because we're never going to measure this average energy. If we do a measurement, we're only going to measure the energy of one of these eigenfunctions, which constitute our wave function. So. C2, C, or sorry, C3, C4, C6, C7, all the way up to C infinity, all those values are zero. So there's a 0% chance of measuring anything other than these three uh, eigenvalues. 
So the probability of measuring each of them is proportional to cn star times cn, or the magnitude of cn squared. Since these are real, we can just square our individual coefficients. So for c1, square root of 1 half squared is 1 half, or a 50% chance that we measure e1. Uh, for c2, it's square root of 1 over 5 squared, or a 20% chance of measuring e2. Square root of 3 over 10 squared, or 3 tenths, or a 30% chance of measuring e3. It's becoming more apparent now why I've written these in the way that I've written them. So all three of these together, you notice sum up to 100%, and since they do, that means I have properly normalized my wave function. All right, so if we look at a diagram here, if we have a graph where we have units of h squared over 8 ml squared, E1 is at 1, I have a 50% chance of measuring that value. E2 is at 4, I have a 20% chance of measuring that value. E5 is at 25, which is n squared, I have a 30% chance of measuring that value. So the most likely is E1, and E2 constitutes some more likelihood, and then there's 30% chance that I'm going to be up here. So it's kind of like a two-thirds, one-third kind of pull down towards the bottom here. So you'll notice that my average value, my E bar, or E brackets, is equal to 8.8, .8, which is exactly where you would expect it to fall based off of these individual values and those percentages for what the probability of each measurement is going to be.